If you've been following along in this series, you know that for the past 21 episodes, we've been talking about nothing but, well, how does the computer represent things in binary, ones and zeros? Now we're going to dig, well, we're going to shift a little bit. We're going to start talking about something called Boolean logic or binary logic. And, and really what we're looking at here is the implementation of circuits that are gonna make decisions based on the patterns of ones and zeros that we find in the machine. And really the starting point for this is something called a logic gate. A logic gate is, well, it's a, it's a small circuit. And, and at the level that we're talking about here, what we've got is this thing called a logic gate that has multiple inputs. Well, it could have one or more inputs. And we're going to label these inputs with, well, the way I do this is we're going to label these inputs with capital letters starting with A. So you're looking at A, B, C, D, and so on to get to all the, to, to basically label all the inputs that are going into that gate. And then we're going to have a single output X. Now, all the inputs and the output X, they're going to have one of two possible levels, either a logic zero or a logic one. Those two levels that the transistors can represent, right? And so the inputs here, however many inputs we've got, we've got, well, for example, if there's two inputs, how many possible ways can two inputs take on the values of zero and one? Well, they can be zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one. And in fact, we can figure this out pretty easily just using the two to the n uh, expression. So if I have n inputs, if I have two inputs, two to the two is four possible patterns of ones and zeros. One input, two possible patterns of ones and, and zeros. Three inputs, eight possible patterns of ones and zeros. Now, there is an algorithm that is defined by the logic inside of this gate that is going to dictate, based on the inputs, what this output is going to look like. So, really, the, you know, the, 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 the logic itself, the definition of the operation, the, the algorithm, will explain what we are trying to generate with this output, but there's a much simpler or more obvious way that we are going to represent what this X is with respect to the inputs A through whatever, however many inputs. And that is called a truth table. All right, now a truth table, well, it's truth, right? A truth table is simply a, it's a table of values that shows for a particular pattern of inputs, A, you know, through whatever, what is our output X going to look like? And it looks like this. The format is like this. So we have these columns here, which represent the inputs. And so let's just go ahead and grab a couple of them. Let's just say A, B, and C. And then on the and then we have a vertical bar here, and that vertical bar on the right side of the vertical bar, we're going to show what the output, the corresponding output is equal to. Now, later on in the, in the uh, lesson series, later on in this series, I'm going to put multiple, in fact, I might even do it today. Um, I'm going to put multiple outputs, but really what we're looking at is a single truth table is for all the patterns of inputs, what is our output going to look like? And so, for example, let's say we've got three inputs. That means we've got eight possible patterns of ones and zeros, right? All right, so there are all eight of our possible patterns of ones and zeros. And I don't know, let, let, let's define an algorithm. Um, what the algorithm might, might be is, okay, the algorithm might be something along the lines of if the input, if there are two, exactly two ones at the input, then we're going to output a one. If there is zero, one, or three ones at the input, we're going to output a zero. Okay? It's, it's an algorithm. And I will also define it as X. So I've got 
zero ones. We're going to output a zero. I've got one one. That's still not equal to two ones. I'm going to output a zero. I've got one one. Still not equal to two ones. And then this row right here, zero, one, one, I've got two ones here. So I'm going to output a one to say, yes, the number of ones at the input is equal to two. Then I've got one, zero, zero. That row just has one, one in it. So we're going to output a zero. Then this next row, one, zero, one, two ones, I'll output a one. This row right here, two ones and a zero, we'll output a one. And then this last row right here, we've got three ones, not equal to two ones, so we'll output a zero. So I've got a little truth table right here that based on the algorithm, I'm going to output two one, I'm going to output a one if I've got exactly two ones at in my input. That's what the result is going to look like. All right? Now, back in the old days, many years ago, I used to have a hobby of, well, rebuilding old cars. And my favorite car to rebuild was uh, the late 60s, well, the, the 67, 68, 69 Mercury Cougars. I always just had a fondness for them. Maybe it was because at the time I was working on them, they were cheaper to come by than a 60s Mustang. Now, the real ta rear taillights on these Cougars, you may have seen these, these, uh, the, these lights that um, in, in newer Mustangs where if the turn signal was on, it went the inside light lit first for a moment, and then the middle light lit for a moment, and then the outside light lit for a moment. And so you had, they were called sequential taillights back then. And so you had this blink, 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 blink to show that they were turning on, or they, you know, they, they give you this indicator of what direction the vehicle was turning. Now, the, the Cougars, uh, especially the 67 and 68 Cougars, had a mechanical actuator back there. And it was this little cam driven circuit where when you turn the turn signal on, a shaft turned. And as the shaft turned, these cams turned on and off connectors or made and broke connections to turn on and off the lights. And in fact, if you if it was quiet in the car and you turned the turn signal on, you could actually from the trunk hear this as the turn signals were, were operating. Now, one of the first things to fail in these old cars was those turn signal, uh, those actuators. And so whenever you go to the parts, whenever you go to any of the parts suppliers and you look for this turn signal, this, this actuator, gosh, at the time, this was a number of years ago, they were you know close to $200 and, and I could never really afford this. So instead, we built a circuit. So let's look at what kind of a circuit we might have for these Cougars. So what I might do is have a timer, a counter. And all this counter does is a two-bit counter. And so for the amount of time you want to have one of the lights on, you simply have, that's the period, that's how fast this counter is incrementing. So I'm going to call the inputs A and B. I'm going to have a two-bit counter, and it's going to go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. All right? And then whenever it hits one, one, and it goes to the next number, it's going to go back to zero, zero. So we'll go zero, 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 one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, and so forth. You get the idea. Now, there are three lights on here. So I'm just going to call this X sub zero, X sub one, and X sub two. And so if you were to look at a profile of this light, what we'll do is we'll just say that the inside one, the one that was closest to the license plate. The one that was closest to the license plate, we'll call that X sub zero. So the X sub zero, it's a binary value. It's just going to output whether the light is on or off. A zero is off, a one is on. And so we'll have off, or excuse me, the inside one and then the middle one will be X one and then the outside one will be X two. Now, what I want to do is have this timer set up so that it turns on to the next step and to the next step and to the next step. So on zero, zero, I want all three of my lights to be off. All right. On zero, one, I want to have just the inside light on and then the outside, the middle and the outside light off. And then whenever I have A and B equal to one and zero respectively, I want the inside light on, the middle light on, and the outside light off. 
And then whenever the timer gets all the way to the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, for an A and B equal to 1, 1, what I'm going to have is all three lights are on. And then whenever we cycle around, when the clock comes back around, then they'll all sh shut back off. And now what we have is the, you know, the all lights off and then the inside and then the inside two and then all three on. And you'll get this sequential sequence. Um, now, the thing that I want you to take a look at, let's real quick just look at the X0 column. Now, the logic gate, what we want to do is have a logic gate that says, based on the inputs, when do I turn X0 off? When do I turn X0 on? Well, it looks like from this circuit right here, from this truth table right here, that what I want to do is turn X0 of zero on if either of the inputs is on. I only, the only time I want to have X sub zero off is when all the inputs are off. So another way of saying this, and, and, and hopefully this will ring a bell with some people, uh, if I were to say something like conjunction junction, a lot of people would say, oh, what's your function? The idea of taking two things and putting them together with a conjunction. Now we are going to use some conjunctions here. And the first conjunction I'm going to use is OR. I want to turn X sub zero on if A is a one or if B is a one. All right. So we'll just simply say X sub zero is equal to A is on or B is on. We're going to come up with a better symbol than the word on in just a moment, or actually in the next lesson. Now, x sub 1. What does x sub 1 look like? Well, x sub 1 is going to be a 1 when, pff, looks like it's just going to be a 1 when a is equal to a 1. So I'm just going to put down here x sub 1 is equal to just a. If a is a 0, x1 is a 0. If a is a 1, x1 is a 1. All right, so there's a circuit for you right there. Just a wire, just connect X1 directly to A. In X sub two, when is it gonna be a one? Well, X sub two is gonna be a one only for one of these rows. Which row is it? Remember, conjunction, junction. Which conjunction are we using? Well, I wanna put X two on if both a and b are equal to a 1. So here comes my expression here. x sub 2 is equal to a and b. All right. And we've done our first circuit. And it turns out that this word or and this word and, those are two types of logic gates. We'll talk a little bit more about those in, in, in the next lesson. But before we get to the next lesson, there is one gate that I do want to talk about. And in fact, I probably could have, could have done my design here so I could have used that kind of a gate, but there is a single input gate. There's a type of gate that just has one input. And that type of gate is called the inverter or sometimes the not gate. Now the NOT gate has just one input, and that one input we're going to call A. And so I'm going to make my little truth table over here, and it's going to be really little here because it just needs to have this one input, A. Now how many possible values can A take on as a logic signal? Well, it's either a 0 or a 1, right? So there's your two signals. So it's a 0 or a 1. <clears throat> now what is X equal to? Well. The definition of an inverter, and I'm not going to write it down because I don't have much room up here, but the definition of an inverter is that it's going to output the opposite logic level from what's being input. So if A is a logic zero, we want to output the opposite logic value on X. That'll be a logic one. If we want to output, or if A is equal to a logic one, then we want to output the opposite logic value on X. That's a zero, right? And there's your inverter. We'll use these a number of times whenever we start putting these gates together to create circuits. But that's the simple inverter. Now, 
I know we're in computer science and we're not supposed to design hardware, but let's go ahead and show a little bit of hardware. There's this thing called a schematic, which is a representation of these logic circuits that we're going to create. Now, on a schematic, an inverter looks typically like this. It is a small triangle with the input A coming in on the left hand side. Now the triangle in itself is not an inverter. The triangle actually is an element called a buffer. Um, it, or, or it's just it's, it's something that, that takes a logic signal and just makes sure that the logic level is, is strong enough, that there's enough pressure behind it whenever it goes on along through the circuit. To make it an inverter, it's actually a small circle at the tip. That's what makes it an inverter. And so coming out of that small circle, we're going to have the rest of our circuit, the line that goes to X. All right. Now, in our next lesson, we're going to take a look at more logic gates. Specifically, we're going to take a look at this one that is an AND. All right.